Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, you get me, Dr. Janine Krause, naturopathic doctor, acupuncturist, and yes, host of the Health Fix Podcast. Today's episode, I have to speak my mind a little bit. It's been a minute since I've done a solo podcast and it's time. So right now, one of the biggest questions that I have in my mind rolling around in it is, am I helping? Am I helping you to move forward in your health journey? Helping with aging, helping with hormones, helping with whatever it may be and getting your health fix. But the question beyond that is, am I guiding you? Am I supporting you? And why do I say these things? Well, because as a naturopathic doctor, I was taught to look for root cause. I was taught to dig and look for what's going on. We were also taught that patients know best. You know your body best. You are in your body. We were taught all that. And so that's how I've always approached practice. I'm not an authoritarian in my practice. I'll tell you what I think, but I'm also not going to be the one that's like, you have to do this. I'm going to give you my opinion. But at the end of the day, it's your body. You know what's going on in your body. You can tell what's going on. You can feel what's going on. You know when a supplement doesn't work. You know when a protocol doesn't feel right. You know these things. The traditional medical model has jacked with your brain. It is jacked with your brain to convince you that you need a pill. You need something outside of you to help you. Well, look around you. Is the medical system healthy? When you just look at it, face value, no, it's jacked up. I have to fax four times just to make sure a clinic gets a stinking fax because I'll tell my patients they don't have a fax. Do you know how much admin time that takes out of me being able to help other folks? A lot. Could I hire another assistant to do these things? Absolutely. But if I'm having to do this, do you imagine what larger clinics are having to do. This is insane. Same thing with pharmacies. I put in a prescription. They tell my patients the prescription didn't go in. So being the agitated trauma, let's say trauma, because that's what it is, experience that I have, I will screenshot. No, I did turn it in person. Here, here's my, my work. I did my work. And that's the thing. I'm going to straight up admit if I screwed up and forgot. But Nine times out of 10, I've done my job in the system on one end or the other is broken. And it's frustrating. It is so frustrating because it's a lot of time wasted. And should it bother me? Maybe, maybe not. But when it really boils down to it, why would it bother me? Because most of the time, it's getting me thinking about Do I really need to give this person that prescription? Because yes, in Washington state, I can prescribe. I am on the same level as a medical doctor. I can prescribe. I cannot prescribe antipsychotics. Don't want to. Can't prescribe opioids. No, thank you. Not interested in that. But here's the thing. It frustrates me because I think, you know what? Could we be doing better? Could we be doing something else internally? Energetic work. Could we be doing something Dietary wise, is there something in the food system that's jacking with this person's health and hence they need they need this medication? Now, am I talking about things like bioidentical hormones? Am I talking? No, those are optimization. These are choices. I'm talking about blood pressure medications. I'm talking about statins. I'm talking about these kind of things that unfortunately people will come to me on them or if we can't get something under control, and I am sincerely worried about someone's health, yes, we have to go there. I've never prescribed more medications in my life than in the last couple of years. I do feel some days like a glorified drug dealer. And it sucks because I know that that's not helping. That's not helping what's going on. It's not helping the situation. And so I have to speak out about this because I can't not anymore. The medical system is broken. We know that. The food system is even more broken. Your food is making you sick. Bottom line. You're addicted to certain snacks and treats because there are things in there 
that are meant to make you eat more of them. Drinking copious amounts of wine is not going to help your heart health. Drinking a beer or alcohol to help you relax at night, yeah, it might help, but it's going to do other things eventually to your body. And if you are struggling with gut issues and you keep drinking, I can't help you. You are literally putting toxins into your body. Bottom line. So where, where did this come from? Where, where am I kind of on this rant from? Well, Kate Northrup, she's a gal who I work with in terms of helping me with my nervous system and, and helping me to understand money and, and work well with it. I think a lot of us have to look at our financial wellness just as much of our health. But point being, she had a podcast that came out on her Plenty podcast that talked about credentials. And who the heck cares if we have credentials when the ivory tower people, so meaning the people who create the medical system, the system that is sick, by the way, but then beat up on people who do not have credentials and are trying to help people and beat up on folks like naturopathic doctors who have a lot of freaking training. I went to school for seven years, seven years. Yes, it's longer than the traditional naturopath training because I also did acupuncture. Now, I'm not trying to get you to think, oh, wow, that's so impressive. I could care less. I could care less if people call me doctor. Most of my, most of my clients call me Janine, and I don't care. I want to be on the same level. Why? Because you are in your body. I'm just here to keep you out of trouble because of the things I know via my training of, oh, I probably shouldn't take that herb with this one, you know, and maybe it could be food, this or that. I'm, I'm a guide. I am your guide. And I have been through a lot of trauma in my career. And I share this because if any of you out there are listening, maybe you are a coach, maybe you're a massage therapist, maybe you're an acupuncturist, maybe you are a Reiki master. A lot of people do these things on the side. They won't pull the trigger for the full career. Why? Because we have it in the back of our mind this imposter syndrome. We have in the back of our mind this, I'm not good enough. The medical system doesn't accept me. There are some very strong people out there in my field that do not care. I spent too much of my career worried about what the medical system says about me. Why? Because I, <laughs> I would get calls from medical doctors saying, why do you have this person on this? It's going to do nothing for them. You're a quack. You should stop practicing. No joke. Early in my career, I was getting phone calls like that. I also would refer patients to, well, some neurologists and endocrinologists in Tacoma. And yeah, if you're from Tacoma and you know an endocrinologist or a neurologist, you can tell them I don't even care at this point. No love, no love there from them for natural medicine. And it sucks. It sucks. You know why? Because a lot of people need endocrinology and, and the specialty of, of the neurology to help us get some answers, just to rule some stuff out. Because like I said, after all, you are your own best doctor. We want to keep that in mind. But I've referred people to endocrinologists. I've referred people to, to neurologists. I've referred people to cardiologists. And they, they look at my patients and go, why are you here? Are you kidding me? Why are you here? Well, did you read my notes to say, I'd like you to kind of roll this out and help me out here? Like help a sister out. That's all I want. Instead, they tell my patients why naturopathic medicine is quackery. That is sad. It's absolutely sad. And the sad part about it, the even more sad part about it, is that in the statistics for naturopaths and acupuncturists, only 10% of my graduating class will still be practicing 10 years later. For me, it's 17. And I can tell you right now, when I look and search to see who's still practicing, it dwindles. And COVID took a big hit on a lot of folks, especially acupuncturists and massage therapists. But here's the, here's the point. In, in my rain, rants or rave or whatever you want to want to hear it as. I believed that I was a quack for a long time. I believed that my training from past year was bullshit. I did. I started to think everything I had done and everything I had learned was stupid. I started to believe that maybe I do need to use the pharmaceuticals because these herbs aren't getting the results. Anytime I don't get results with someone, I shouldn't say now, it's, it's changed, but anytime I didn't get results from people, with people, not from people, but with people, I would beat myself up immensely and be like, this, this stuff I do is bullshit. But that's not the truth. That is not the truth at all. 
I mean, I've had people blast me for working with me and not getting results. But here's the thing. What effort did you put in? Because I give it my all. Because of how much this affected me and I let it, and this is the point I want a lot of people to take from this podcast is we let others get in our heads and hold us back from the potential that we have, potential to heal, potential to overcome a certain medical condition, potential to thrive in our careers, whatever it may be. And I let the medical system beat me down to a point where I literally would talk about jumping in front of buses. My husband can tell you all about it. I'm not proud of saying that, but I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I really struggled for a long time, which is hard when you're trying to guide people, when you're trying to give people positive messages and, and guiding them when you're like, I don't even know if I trust my own medicine which is crazy to say and to hear myself say that out loud. Do I trust it now? Absolutely. freaking lutely Do I trust that the food system is broken and that's one of the main factors people can't get healthy? Absolutely. Do I also trust the fact that most of us have everything inside of us to heal? You better believe it. We do. But the thing is, we've been all freaking brainwashed to think that we need to think outside of our bodies. We need to think about, we need to find someone that's going to fix us. I even debated on changing my podcast, The Health Fix name, because I wasn't trying to have people think that I was fixing. It was more like a, a drug fix, um, which even now saying that, oh, my God, I don't know. I'm changing the name of the podcast, maybe. Nah, I probably won't, because really the, the bottom line with The Health Fix is it's getting your daily dose or, or weekly dose whenever you listen to things of this podcast or episodes of this podcast. It's really getting your dose of, of what's legit and, and what can maybe can give you an insight to look within your body and see what resonates with you. So let me tell you a little story about a patient of mine. I've been working with her for over a decade now. And recently, she started to have a lot more gut issues, a lot more. Your gut is your first brain. So, of course, we have to think about neurologically. What's going on there? Am I going to send her a neuro neurologist and tell her, tell her, refer her to the neurologist to say, hey, neurologist, we think that her first brain is an issue. Can you work on the neurology of her gut? Heck no. Don't do that. That'll get you quackery. That'll get you the quackery stamp. You put that around my forehead. I'm cool with it now. But I'm not going to refer. No, I'm going to be like, okay, we have gut issues. We have cramps. We have constipation. When do they show up? When she's not feeling good in her body, meaning mentally not feeling good. Right now, she's struggling with a lot of loneliness, with a lot of not finding her tribe. How hard would it be to walk through this world by yourself without any friends, not getting along with your family? I can't imagine. Of course, that would have you energetically off. So in all of this, we were looking because I'm not going to deny someone the look at, you know, the, the desire to look at things, like whether we look at DNA, which we did in her case, because we, we wanted to know why does she always feel inflamed? What's going on with her gut? We also looked at a stool test. We also looked at a host of other things. Now, do I run copious amounts of, of labs with every patient? No, it's based on what are you wanting? How can I help you? I'm here to help. I'm not going to tell you no, I'm not going to do that. I will tell you if I think it might be a waste of money and then let you decide. I'm not going to say, nope, I won't run it. Because I've heard that from the conventional medical space. In fact, I just saw a fellow yesterday who's complaining of chest pain and his doctor told him, nah, you don't need an EKG. Nah, it's probably just from working out. If he goes and has a heart attack tomorrow, I mean, if that was me telling him not to do that, I would feel terrible. So the point is, is if someone's asking for care, they're asking for tests, they're asking for these things, it's because intuitively they need to know the information. Now, could you argue with me that this is looking outside your body for answers? Well, maybe. But what if looking for, looking for the test is also looking for with you within, okay, what am I saying? Within you, we're looking for the answers. What if that's the case? Instead, we're looking within you with the labs. So the scale I was talking about that has the gut stuff, she's had the gut stuff for over a decade. And we have thrown all kinds of things at it. To the point where we've gone even into higher level treatments like ozone therapy and hyperbaric chamber and things of that nature. Nothing's working. When you're dealing with the same thing for over 10 years, 
and nothing's working, we got to go energetically. Same thing goes with my my clients that have POTS, so postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is kind of a new diagnosis lately, but really fits into a lot of categories. Same thing with mold exposure, Lyme, MS. I'm going to be looking at what set the body off and how long has it been going on for? And when it's been going on for years and years and you've tried supplements, you've tried different diets, you've cleaned up your diet, you have the, like your water is the cleanest water in the universe and your air in your home is the cleanest air in the universe. If you haven't worked on you and how you're thinking, your thought process, your energy, your energetics, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Same thing goes with me as a doc. If I'm not working on my energy, my energetics, I can't help to guide people at my prime. Hey, Hell Junkies, struggling with sleep? As a former insomniac, I can relate. Devin Burke is a pal of mine. He has the Sleep Science Academy. He's been on my podcast twice, and we've talked a lot about how to work on sleep naturally, without supplements, without medications. Devin's program really does work with you to help you understand what is going on in your brain and body when it comes to sleep. And as a listener of the Health Fix podcast, he's given us a code for 10% off of his program, DRJ10. So if you're interested, use that. I highly recommend his program. So let's get back to the podcast. Because I've been brainwashed my whole life, grew up with a mom who was a nurse, hung out with her while she worked for Dr. Bain, this beautiful man who was the sweetest old school pediatrician. Love that guy. I don't think I've ever talked about him on the podcast. He was my first experience with doctors. And he, was, he would get down on the floor with me. He would talk to me like I was an adult. And we'd play. And then he would come up with whatever protocol he was going to do. He was old school. He was probably in his 70s when he was seeing me. And he probably practiced a lot more like a naturopathic doctor than a conventional doctor does today. He had me feeling good and not scared. But all that aside, the point is, there's a lot of noise right now in the health space. There's a lot of noise like take this supplement, do this protocol, follow my program, do this particular diet, do this detox. And yes, I've brought on a lot of people that talk about these things. Why do I bring these people on? Because something might resonate with you. The Health Fix podcast is all about bringing you, you know, connecting you with what's out there. What's, what's a possibility that maybe resonates with you and can help you in your health journey? or help you optimize your health. Do I think that supplements are the future of your health? You know, do I think they're magical? No, I don't, I actually don't. Naturopaths have a terrible reputation for here's your basket of supplements, go, you know, go on your merry way. I'm not like that. Yes, do I give them in protocols? I will, but do I want you on that stuff forever? No. And here's the thing, we're gonna test and try to figure out what to target. But at the end of the day, all of these extra things are just extra if you're not looking within, if you're hung up on something. It's said that when you focus on a problem and you keep focusing on the problem, the problem gets worse. Let's take weight loss, for example. That's probably the primest one because people become obsessed about losing weight. And guess what happens? The weight doesn't come off until we start using peptides. Do they work? Yeah. Do you have to put in the effort with protein and exercise and all of that? Yes. Do you need to make sure you're detoxing so that all the weight you're losing, you're able to release those toxins? Absolutely. But once again, we're looking somewhere outside of ourselves. We're looking at the peptides to be the magic. Peptides won't be magic. Yes, they'll help you lose weight. They won't be magic unless you're working on you. So back to the big question I started the podcast with. Am I helping? I want everyone to ponder on that question. 
Am I helping you? Are you helping you? What's helping? What isn't helping? And taking a really good look at your health and going, how could I listen to my intuition a little bit better on what resonates with me and what doesn't? It's very important this day and age when things are so heightened on social media, giving you all these quick fixes. I just heard about rice zempic, using rice and soaking it, and then you're going to lose weight because of the supposed starch that's in the rice. Guys, this is BS. And rice has a lot of arsenic in it. Guess what arsenic does? It suppresses your appetite. There's your rice zempic. You're almost better off using a peptide. These are the things that are out there. And if you look at something and you're like, wow, that's kind of weird, don't really resonate with it. Yeah, it probably doesn't. But if you're looking at energy work, you're looking at quantum healing. Quantum healing is looking at every single of your cells, your nervous system, how your whole body is vibrating, your vibration. You can have good vibes, you can have bad vibes. How do we know the difference? You walk in a room when everyone's angry, there's your bad vibes. Walk in a room where people are celebrating feeling good, that's the good vibes. We can feel these things. And we know inherently if we feel good or bad in the body. And we can change the energy by working on, yes, thought process, yes, mindset, but also working on healing our nervous systems. And one of the most controversial kind of woo things right now that's out there is working on helping your nervous system and feel safe, safe to heal, safe to lose weight. Sounds weird, but it's a thing. Safe in your body in general with POTS and Lyme and, you know, MS and chronic Epstein-Barr and hypothyroidism. I mean, people come in with all these complaints to me. That person is not safe in their body because chances are they've adopted the concept that their body is attacking it and they, it's, re it's rebelled against them. It's betraying them. You can fit in the words. If you have these conditions, you know what I'm talking about. You feel this. I feel it when I talk to these folks. There are a lot of people out there that have all of these programs to try to help to heal these conditions. But if they don't have a nervous system component of safety in the body and helping you to heal your nervous system, that program might not work. It might not. But here's the thing. We're back to the concept of does it resonate with you? Does it feel like it's going to help you? So what happened with my patient with the gut issues? that we realized that all the bug kills and all the different things we were trying to help her digestive system weren't working. She was feeling worse. We had to go back to training her to see what resonated with her. How do we do it? Muscle testing, another super woo thing. This is taking a particular supplement, taking a particular food, whatever it may be. It could be even taking water. Put it on your chest. See if you lean forward. See if you lean back or if you stay neutral. If you lean back, your body doesn't want that. If you lean forward, your body's like, yeah, that's cool. If you pick something up and it feels super heavy and doesn't feel good, that's another sign. Your nervous system is telling you, I don't like that. I don't want that. It's probably one of the most simplest ways to learn if something's going to help or not, if something resonates with you or not. And I know so many people, we've been stuck in the space of your healing is outside of you. The conventional medical model doesn't have you ask your body if this is going to help. That makes it look very quackery. But the truth is, the longer and, and the longer I've been in the game, this is what works. Like I said, I've been in 17 plus years now. This is what works. The energy stuff, the quantum, how you're vibrating. This is why PEMF pads and things like the AMP coil, I did a podcast with the folks from AMP coil, it's changing your vibration. You're laying on, you're laying with something that vibrates. This is why music is so healing. This is why tuning forks, the things where I hit them and put them onto the body. This is why Tibetan singing bowls, all of these things, we vibrate with them. We're vibrational beings. We are energetic beings. So we need to be looking at what can help us to vibrate at a better level. 
There are programs. My one good friend, Dr. Shiroko Skodich, I'll put it in the podcast notes. She has a whole program where it listens to your voice and can tell from the vibration that comes out. So the hertz that comes out with you saying A-E-I-O-U, what's going on with you internally? What's out of balance vibrationally? And then you get liquid droppers where you take them. It's energetic medicine. It's quantum-based kind of medicine where you take it and you're changing what's going on inside. Now, Probably you've heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton, those guys, those guys work on quantum energy fields. This is working on the energy to help you change how you feel, help people heal from cancer and all kinds of conditions. It sounds almost too good to be true. And I'm not here to sell anyone on anything. Like I said, I'm here to put the word out about trusting yourself trusting your intuition. My gal with the gut stuff, she now is taking foods and taking supplements and seeing what resonates with her. Interestingly enough, she's feeling better. Now that we have a long way to go in terms of helping her to find her tribe because loneliness will impact your energy. And when you get down on it and you start focusing on it, you're going to attract more of that because like vibes attract. So just want to plant that seed. I am by no means a specialist in quantum energy fields. I'm just starting to learn about it and really starting to understand how crucial it is for us to realize we can take care of ourselves. We have everything inside of us to heal ourselves especially from these chronic things like hypothyroidism, POTS, long-haul COVID, Lyme. Do the supplements help in these cases? Sure. Do certain interventions help? Sure. But here's the thing. Working on your nervous system is key. Helping you feel safe in your body to trust your intuition to know what's best for you. Your nervous system has probably been through some kind of little traumas or big traumas or little things that have happened. Whether it's someone saying something to you over and over again to not trust, the schooling that you've had actually has merit. My gosh, I went into it for a reason. I wanted to help people. I wanted people to feel good. What does that boil down to? I want people to feel good. I want people to vibrate on a good level. A lot of the things that I've done with treatments and different things over the years Maybe we're Band-Aids. Maybe some people got better. I say maybe. I know that I've helped people, but here's the thing. I've helped guide them. They did the rest of it, not me. And this is the most important thing. Asking yourself, am I helping my situation by focusing on things outside of me? Could I help myself more by looking within trusting my intuition and when something doesn't feel right perhaps not going towards that and going towards what feels right now I know a lot of people might come back at me and say I don't know how to trust my own intuition I don't know how to trust myself especially when it comes to food you know how to trust yourself when it comes to food stop eating processed food stop eating anything that is made in a store comes in a bag just stop it because those things are meant to manipulate and hijack your brain and your choices. Bottom line, eat 100% whole foods. You're not going to have troubles trusting yourself. You're going to know and you're going to learn. Beyond food, we know when things feel good. We know when things don't. Trusting that and speaking up with your medical providers. I love it when people tell me like, yeah, that didn't really resonate with me. Great. Let's not do that. If you have a medical provider that is very authoritative and won't listen to you, find another one. Find another one. There's plenty of us out there. So, bottom line, am I helping? Are you getting benefit? Things to think about. 
asking yourself, am I helping myself? Am I trusting myself? Have I given myself the authority to take care of myself? Do I trust myself to take care of myself? Here's the thing, docs like me, functional medicine docs who understand that medicine is much of a partnership, not an authoritative situation. We're here to help you, here to guide you. If you feel like you can't trust yourself, but you want to know the tools to do that, you want to know how to help your nervous system reset, you want to know how to do this, this is where to head. Stop trying to go to the sick care system. It doesn't help in a lot of cases. Now, are there, are there great doctors in the medical system? Absolutely. Are they stuck within a system that they have to adhere to? Yeah. I hope someday we can free them. I really do. But in the meantime, if you're struggling, you're not getting answers, you want to know, or you want to optimize your health and you're not being listened to, first, you got to listen to your own self. Second, team up with someone that can help you. So that's been a long journey of a podcast with this stuff here. I just had to share it. I just had to share it. I had to get off my chest because I think it's absolutely important how much we need to emphasize that we are strong human beings on our own. Whether it's our career, whether it's our health, whatever it may be in life. Don't look to others for approval. Don't look to others for feeling like you're in the tribe. It may be hindering you. Yes, we're tribal people. We want to be the cool kids. We don't want to be the outcasts. But if it's harming your health and your ability to thrive in life, it's time to step out of the box. It's time to step out of the box and start to train yourself to trust yourself and feel safe in your body. Now, I haven't given a ton of resources. I like to do that when it comes to feeling safe in your body. If you're a woman looking to help with nervous system and work on financial stuff, that's Kate Northrup at katenorthrup.com. Check her out. If we're looking for things like quantum healing, what's that all about? Definitely Bruce Lipton and, and Joe Dispenza, those guys are the top in that department. If we're looking at what to do about the nervous system and really being able to understand the nervous system, there are a lot of folks out there who are working on nervous system balancing and things of that nature. And I'm going to put some resources of the folks that I have learned from but also do like in, in this space and see if you resonate with them. There are folks out there. What can you search if you're looking for somebody? You're looking for nervous system healing. That's what we're putting out there. And and. It's incredibly important to, to know that you can pretty much find everything you need to help you use what you have inside of you to put yourself in a place where you feel vibrantly good and you feel balanced and you feel safe and very possibly if you can work with certain things in the right way, you can get yourself back up and healthy. Doesn't matter how many multiple different types of conditions you have. Don't let be a victim to them. You can overcome these things. You have to buy into and trust that you have everything inside of you to heal yourself. Stop looking for outside magic pills. Start looking within and find somebody who will align with you to help get you to the next level. All right, this one's been a big dose of the health fix. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear feedback as to what this brought up for you, what kind of things you are looking for. And as I asked originally, am I helping and how could I help more? All right, have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, 
please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.